When I came to California in 1959, I was just turning 19 years old, uh-huh. and I and I ended up in North Hollywood. At that at that time, 56 years ago, North Hollywood was just a little Mickey Mouse little town sure. uh, in the San Fernando Valley, and I I, I got a nice little uh, room. In the backyard, uh, these people had a big, back, big backyard, and they had about six or eight little cottages. Uh, and then there was one that had a one bedroom. All the rest of them were just little, little things. And uh, so I got one, and I was in living there in North Hollywood. Well, the lady who had the one bedroom was about eighty years old. Her name was Gracie. And Gracie was a sweetheart, and I loved her dearly. And she, she, you know, she would hobble along going to the store while I would always run errands for her and do whatever she needed done. And uh, and so we became very close friends. And one night, Gracie uh, asked me. She said, "Why don't you come over for dinner? I'm fixing dinner. Come over." And and so I had never been at our place before, so I did. And when I got there, I was absolutely blown away. Uh, she had in her front room, and I may have told you this before, but she had in her front room all kinds of pictures on the wall, all of them with very famous gangsters, all of the guys from Chicago, oh. Detroit, and uh, Kansas City. I'm talking about all of them. She had, she was a beautiful dance hall girl, but she kept talking about she lived the life. And uh, she was a mall, M O L L, a mall. Well, that's what, yes, and, and she didn't mind telling me. She said, yeah, I, I, just, I lived the life. And she said, well, happily, I'm still here. I don't know how that happened, but I'm still here. And she said, uh, and so she had all these pictures of all, and so she talked with me for hours uh, over dinner about each one of the pictures, each one of the gangsters that she was with and what they were like and who oh they my. were and what they did, et cetera. Oh and it was my. a brilliant uh uh, education for a 19 year old kid. And I was, and I had the presence of mind to know that I'm in the presence of a, of a lady who has been there. This lady knows what she's talking about. But she had a bunch of pictures on this, on the one wall, very prominent with her sitting on the lap of Al Capone. She was a beautiful <laughs> girl, but she was sitting on his lap and, and, and laughing and uh-huh. having a great, great time with Al and his, and his quote, associates, in quote. Uh-huh. And, uh-huh. and so I asked her, I said, uh, Gracie, tell me about Al. And she said, oh, now there's a real story. And she began telling me all kinds of personal stuff about Al Capone and you know, all of his habits and all of his ways and the and, and the way he acted and the way he re- reacted to things, et cetera. And she said, then then she said, you know, one night I was sitting on his lap. We were having drinks around with all the, all the guys. And she said, and I asked him because he was in a especially jovial mood. So I took advantage of that. She said, so I asked him and, 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 you know, in front of everybody, she said, Al, tell me, how come you can do what you do and be who you are? And everybody in Chicago, in Illinois and in this country knows who you are. And yet, uh, you know, you're free to do whatever you want to do. I mean, how does that work? And he said to her, Gracie, I am simply a small cog and a big wheel. I do uh, jobs for my masters, and they allow me to play my games. Uh, so we have a we have a working arrangement. Government uses me to do jobs that they don't want the, their their name talked to. So they give me little things to do for them, and and uh, and the payback is that they leave me alone, and we have a nice arrangement. They need somebody bumped off, I'll take care of it, and if I get in trouble, they'll take care of it. So uh, he says, so I just I exist actually to serve the guys who really run this country, and uh, and if I you know if I get out of line, then I'm through. And they, they, they can do that quickly. But they let me do what I do because I serve them. And so she told me, she said, living the life, I came to the conclusion that organized crime is simply a business. And it's a business that caters to a bigger business, which is government. And, and the bottom line is, is that, uh, 
the guys are getting away with stuff. They're getting away with it, and the government knows who they are. They know what they're doing. They know where they live. They know what they're doing. Uh, if they get out of line and offend someone in government, well, that's different. Now they've got a prison. But uh, as long as they do their thing and do what the uh, government wants them to do, and, uh, you know, it's just a business, two corporations working together. And so I just thought about that over the years that, you know, this was Al Capone's view of government, and this was her view, and uh, unfortunately, this is my view now. It's government wants uh, these things to happen. I mean, oh, so-called, so-called crime and criminals are simply that's another right. extension of government, of course. Now, this okay. is amazing. At 19, Jordan, that yeah. sounds like it may have been your first glimpse into it's how children. the world <laughs> was really run. Yeah, and I sat there all night listening to her oh. telling me about all of these famous criminals and who they were working for and what politicians were in their pocket and how it would, you know how the whole system worked and uh, the the banking how the banks were working directly with uh, uh Bugsy Siegel and Mario Lansky and some of the biggest banks in, in the uh, in the in the U.S. and especially in California. I mean, I could tell you a story that will turn your hair white. That stuff is incredible. My hair already is white, so go ahead. Yeah, well then it will fall out. No, 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 stop! <laughs> Don't do that. Um, so, uh, but the point is, I'm making what a, is what that, a beautiful story. Yeah, it's incredible. Jordan, that's that, uh, just amazing. Listening to somebody like her just rattle off for hours, a couple, three hours of all kinds of stories about powerful people, politicians, and uh, presidents and vice presidents and congressmen and who they are and who, who they're paying off and, and, and who gets bumped off. Uh, you know. What a blessing for you. Uh, I mean, I think of all the, the horrors you've been through, especially at this stage in your life, and you don't need, you don't deserve any of that, but look, Look at the good. I know you do. But look at this woman sharing that with you. I mean, I can almost feel uh, like I'm there listening when you're describing it. Uh, it just yeah, it, She yeah. was wonderful. She was wonderful. Yeah. She was so kind. And, and But I could tell by the pictures she was one party girl. There's no doubt about that. Okay. And she was beautiful, right. and and she and she attracted the attention of some of the the biggest names in in, in the gangster world. Right. And, uh, right. But the bottom line on this story is that <clears throat> Al Capone. I shall never forget the way she said it. Al said he exists at the behest of the powers that be that use him. And as long as he does what they need to be done, <clears throat> then he can play his games and do what he wants to do. And uh, and when they've decided they've had enough of him, then that's it. So the bottom line is I came away understanding that government has the power to do whatever they want to do, period. I mean, it's not like the mafia. No, no, this is far more powerful than that. <clears throat> and that the government has the power to do whatever they want to do or to get done whatever they want done. And if they can't do it, they will pay someone to do it. So when you see the crime in the streets, when you see the, the breakdown of law and order in America and around the world, you need to understand that's what the politicians on the inside, the big guys who run the planet, what that's what they want because they are paying large sums of money in contracts around the world to get things done. And so whatever is done, that's what they wanted. Got it. And and, yeah. and if they didn't want it, they would take a. It would be a. If they if something was happening that this government, the U.S. government, did not want at all, believe me, there would be bloodshed tonight to straighten out whatever it is that's going on that the government does not want happening. But if there's criminals out in the streets and they turn around and let the criminals go and let all the mobsters and all the all the uh, illegals go and let them come back in and give them guns and let them kill each other and kill everybody else uh, <laughs> it's because this is mm -hmm. an idea it's a mm -hmm. political concept mm -hmm. it's a political concept of of keep the people anxious and concerned and worried oh, yeah. Yeah. And so they yeah, keep stress anxiety. That's what, this is a stress society. That's what it's all about. That's you what bet. it's all Absolutely. about. Absolutely. 
Wear yeah, everybody it, down with stress, debt, grief, pain. All yep. of these images that go into the mind that are put there. Stress-oriented, grief-oriented images designed to take the humanity out of humans. That's what I'm trying, basically, to say. It's, it's all orchestrated purposely. And this is why when you have... Uh, uh, cables like uh, like uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, what's some of the cable? The big cable companies like oh, uh, Time Warner. I don't know. There, no, I'm talking them. about like Discovery. Oh, and, uh, History and Channel, kind of, Discovery Channel. There's there, there's 150 or 200 cable channels now. How can you even remember? Yeah, them yeah. Well, I'm talking about the the ones I HBO. Uh, all like whatever. I don't even know. Uh, but I'm talking about Discovery and, and all of those kind of channels. What do sure. they have on now? Uh, they first of all have brainless, useless, uh, useless crap of some old, good old boys down in, uh, in, in Tennessee in the old, in the, in the swamps <laughs> killing alligators or another thing <laughs> they have all the yeah. time is uh, showing you the life in the prisons. And this is not not by chance. Oh, I understand yeah. the concept. Prison right? documentaries, yeah. That's right. But they want to show the people of America. You better be in, and you better get in line and be in compliance because if you go to prison, here's what you're going to be facing in prison. So they make sure they have plenty of, of documentaries on prisons just to keep everybody aware. This is what you're going to get if you get out of line. You're going to prison. So I understand the, the the politics of the uh, propaganda, but keep in mind one thing about propaganda. Propaganda does not deceive you. It helps you to deceive yourself. 